So today I thought we would take a look at this active hair dryer and this is obviously a Dyson clone or knockoff hair dryer. As you can see here even on the box itself not only the picture some of the images that it shows here as you can see here definitely trying to mimic Dyson even digital motor V9 propels 13 liters of air a second let's see how close this looks I never bought a new one but this pamphlet probably looks pretty similar shows all the different attachments and it even comes with one the quality of this is surprisingly good and boy it feels very light I know you can't tell on camera but it looks amazing but it feels very light and just a straight plug-in without any filter I'm talking about electrical EMI filter or EMF filter of course this bottom screen here looks very similar comes off similar even has the fine screen under and this is very difficult to get lined back up unlike the Dyson but it does work and everything just feels light and less quality but it looks remarkably close uh, first failure is probably how lightweight it is the second fail is the push button the little rubber membrane is pushing back down it's not staying on unless you push it and hold it <laughs> so maybe adjust the handle here I don't know it's staying on a little better so most of you may know these attachments here they have the magnet on the attachment itself the Dyson face has a metal ring just ferrous metal so it sticks to it and it actually holds pretty well I mean, it will fall off but it's it's actually um, pretty impressive better than I thought it would be to be honest we do at least have a warning label of some kind here yeah don't put it in a bathtub with you and uh, yeah let's plug it up and see how it does see if I can get it to stay on here get right back off All right. I can definitely tell a difference it does blow hot air but it's not the same as a Dyson that's a fact cold burst does work Well, definitely blows hot air and not overheating with that short run. Uh, everything feels cool to the touch. Functionality similar, definitely copy to a T. So let's get into it. Let's remove our screen. I'm going to use my Kiwi's screwdriver set they sent me here. This is a really nice little set. I do recommend this little set if you ever buying things from Kyle Weeks like any of their other really cool items and tools a lot of you know on my channel I really like their meters they're really hard to beat for the price all right so our screen comes off very similar to the Dyson and we have these screws to remove here and so far all these screws by the way have been small like number one Phillips so no torques like the Dyson
I'm thinking the push buttons just pop off like I'll show on the Dyson when I remove those. They should just pop off like they're glued on, but we'll see. They may be different. I'm not sure. So I'll try to gently grab this tube and pull it down. Oh. <laughs> that just popped right off. All right, so the cold shot button, it just popped right off. You can feel the rubber membrane holding this one. Let's put a little heat on it just to make sure we don't break the plastic. See if the adhesive will let go here. There we go. Yep. Similar button to the Dyson. Really no difference there. Slides off like the Dyson, but we don't have the filter media that the Dyson does. The spot is there for it, but it's just not there. The tube itself is extremely similar. You can tell the one on the right, the actual Dyson is thicker. It has a little more weight to it. I may put this stuff on the scale later just so you can kind of see some of the differences and some of the build quality and um, the mass of it. Again, just number one Phillips screws, just a little typical plastic wood type screw. And our motor is surprisingly similar. Now it doesn't feel near as hard to turn. And everything's cool to the touch. Would you look at that? This is a three phase little BLDC motor. So brushless DC like three phase motor that we're very familiar with on this channel. I do like that better than the two pole or single phase Dyson that I really don't know exactly what it takes to run it. I'll show here side by side, but the Dyson has extremely strong force on the magnet. I know it's, it's hard to see the magnetic pull on this on camera, so I'll try to show you with the screwdriver. I'm trying to flick it past the magnet and you can see the magnetic pull is strong and the fake Dyson is just super easy to turn. Now, to be fair, it's a different technology there being three-phase, and the weight of them is similar, but you can tell they made them extremely similar to each other. But instead of just two pins for the Dyson, we do have three. But that is so, so similar. Oh, if you look here, we even have our little grounding tab like the Dyson has. Even though this one didn't use the grounding tab, as you'll see in the top right here, when I took the Dyson apart, the little grounding tab was used on that motor. So they even copied that, even though it's not used. They have no cover over the 120 volt wires coming in, but they were in a plastic channel. The little push button plate is almost identical. And the way these screws are into the cover the back cover plate is also almost identical. Yeah, that looks like a like the same exact plate. Now I am surprised these little clips on these wire connectors. They do have the little locking clip, and I really like that. So it's no chance of those vibrating loose on you. So they did really good on that. Very similar here as well with Kapton tape over the wire channel. It's just a little bit thinner or more narrow Kapton tape, but the same way with the power wires coming in. And this is like a TFE or Teflon coated high current wire here. Very similar to the Dyson. So just as I showed in some Dyson hair dryer disassemblies, I'm assuming this is going to be very similar. I'm going to get the wires ready to turn. Give you a good look at the switch here. But there should be room in the center of the head for even the switch to turn. I'm just going to pop this little back cover off. It's pretty much just held on by a O-ring. It might be a snap or two, but... Not near as hard to get off as the actual Dyson. So this is like a Dyson. We're going to have to rotate the inner element control board assembly. And I'm trying to remember the direction to rotate here. 
So this is the Dyson teardown. And the way I had to twist to get this element and control board assembly out. And what I didn't realize here at this point is that I turned it the wrong way. The reason being the stops are broke on this one because I've taken the part before. So I'll try to show an up close video showing that these twist in with like a thread and a stop. So you absolutely want to go clockwise re removal from the back side, looking at the black plate, or from the front, the front of the hairdryer where the air comes out. You would go counterclockwise from that direction. Let's see, should I go counterclockwise from the back? No, this is an update here for the video at this point. Um, this should have been clockwise from the back or counterclockwise from the front. So I did do it backwards and um, I was trying to overcome the stops. And if I would have turned this the right way, just a 190 degree turn, and they should have came out. So I'm just trying to get this assembly out. Weird how they didn't turn together like the Dyson assembly. I had to turn the back and the front separately. But I also found out later that these are screwed together, which does matter as well. So even though this wasn't terrible, it, it would only took about half the time if I would have went the correct direction. And there's plenty of room here in the middle for the wires to roll up. You just got to be careful that the switch don't grab and hang up as you're rotating it. But this one is so much more simple than the Dyson. They definitely copied a lot about it, but it's more simple. We do have a limit here like a bimetallic strip limit and we'll have to take this off and see but the face looks very similar the way it locks in here and threads in so here's the dyson i have it mostly apart and we'll notice a few differences here even though they're similar this is your ntc thermistor for temperature feedback and it is not one on the active we also have our ionizer here, our high voltage little transformer. That's also missing on the knockoff Dyson. We see a lot of things different. The weight of it, I can tell you, it, it's a huge difference in weight. As far as build quality, the housing looks very similar, but you can just tell it ain't quite as rigid, but I'm still pretty impressed with it. But you can tell the actual Dyson is a little bit heavier and just better made so let's just go ahead and have the scale in grams here and we're right at 95 grams on the housing for the active and you can tell right off that the Dyson is more heavy on the handle they don't want to hold up let me turn it around so you can see here it's wanting to fall over there we go right at 117 grams Next up, let's do the whole unit for the element and control board assembly. 168 grams. This one just feels so much lighter. Right around 113 grams, yeah. And that's a big difference. That's 50%. Now the motor, on the other hand, right at 62 grams for the fake and 57 grams for the actual Dyson. That's surprising. But I'll show you that again here being three phase maybe. I guess just another winding in there I'm assuming. I'm not going to take it apart to see but that is interesting. Looks like we have right at 19 grams on the fake housing half and almost 23 grams on the actual Dyson. And they are extremely similar. Um, one notice here is the honeycomb protection uh, uh, for the blower itself. It does have protection from anything getting in, even if it gets past the screen, right? So other than that, they're very similar. Looks like they saved money wherever they could. I'm going to take this Capton tape off around the face. And by the way, you can see here on the face a couple of things I was talking about earlier, how the, the thread and the stop is on the outside lip. 
also where the NTC goes in there's actually a spot on the fake or knockoff one but it's covered up it's not even being used here and I didn't realize this one don't go together with the ring holding on a lip like the Dyson it's actually screwed together with left hand threads and that's one reason when you're taking this one out you have to turn the front and the back I'll give you a little bit of an up close of this board as well Now here's our thermal cutout, and this is a 240C, I believe it says. And it's just one, where the Dyson has two, and the Dysons are actually 184C. So that is a little bit different, but the Dyson has probably much tighter temperature control. So I think that's the reason for that. This should stop anything catastrophic from happening, but... I definitely trust the Dyson much more. A similar heater design, but way more element in the Dyson. The knockoff Dyson also only has two wires coming off for the heater. And it's right at, if I get a good connection here, closer to 10 ohms. I got a little bit of resistance loss across these leads. So around 10 ohms is what that actually is. And this looks like just a thermal cutout, like a bimetallic thermal cutout. Yep, and it's closed across it as you would think. So you got that, and if that don't cut out, then you, your thermal limiter has to open. And that's a one and done uh, permanent cutout. Let's check the three phase motor itself, phase to phase, real close to 14 ohms. Check the other one, yep, should be the same, 14 ohms. But this three phase motor does have a tag on it here. And it is a really neat motor, even though it doesn't feel near as strong as the Dyson. But one thing I like about it being a BLDC three-phase, I'm going to bring in this little controller. And if you watch my channel, you've seen this controller before. I have 58 volt going to it. I don't want to overvolt this controller too much. But yep, there we go. This controller will run this BLDC just fine because it's, it's very low torque. It's just high RPM. Right at 20 watts at 60 volts or 58 volts output. So this is probably a 40 watt motor. I do not have a 120 volt BLDC driver or controller. I just don't. But that's pretty sweet to be able to run it at about half speed or so or half power. And it responds very well. That's pretty fun. Yeah, as you would think here, almost no torque on these motors. They're not built for torque. They built for RPM. So any little bit of hair that gets in these is probably going to be even worse than a Dyson about um, stopping the motor. Yeah, 
a lot of y'all have probably seen this controller on some of my other videos working on my ego blowers i have used this controller before on those blowers to get them back going when the controllers fail and they're actually you know unrepairable i do have some 72 volt that are still hauless or sensorless but they're very hard to find anything that goes above 50 volts so hopefully before long i'll have those and i can um, test those out on the channel as well so as i mentioned the dyson with the two pole motor or two wire leads um, i'm not exactly sure how it works other than high frequency it must be a high frequency dc because it does say on it that it's a 120 volt motor. I hope you found this video interesting today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll have some links in the video description of some tools and interesting items that I like to use on my bench. And I find them very helpful. And any of those links you click on will help support the channel. And I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching. And I hope y'all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless. It didn't truly have a thermistor control. Even though the box says it does. Womp, womp, womp. Nope. No thermistor.